So the hot button topic is the Supreme Court rulings, and they are by far what we all would agree, earth shaking decisions. What rulings should you be paying attention to? Which decisions are impacting potentially your health and your access to health care? And which rulings will take us a few steps backwards when it comes to equity in health care? I'm going to spill the judicial tea today. Okay, honestly, your girl didn't realize there was static on the audio until I was done. And I thought about deleting the video, but then I realized, you know what? This information is way too important to delete. So I'm just going to pray that God decreases the static in your ear so you can hear this important information. Thank you for watching and don't forget to click subscribe. So as many of you know, the Supreme Court has made some, let's just say, groundbreaking decisions in the last couple of weeks. And some of them are very popularly talked about. And others, no one's really talking about how it really impacts your health. Today, we're going to talk about the Supreme Court decisions that you should pay attention to when it comes to your health care. As many of you are aware, there are a couple of very significant recent rulings done by the Supreme Court. But we're going to focus on the Chevron decision. The reversal of the Chevron deference is probably one of the most critical rulings that you should pay attention to. So the U.S. Supreme Court issued a very significant ruling on June 20, 2024, just in case you're watching this some other time. That changes really how we look at administrative agencies and how the courts interpret certain types of statutes. Now, granted, there are some statutes that are very clear, that are very straightforward, easily interpreted. But as we know, oftentimes the law has these kind of gray zones, which leads to the need for a judge to interpret the law and make a ruling or decision based on that. Of great importance is a recent Lopper Bright Enterprises versus Raimondo decision in which the court voted in six to one to overturn its 1984 Chevron USA Incorporated versus Natural Resources Defense Council decision. Even though it's mostly based on based on fishing, I'm going to explain today why that fishing industry decision can potentially affect your health care. So under this Chevron deference, the decision had been made that certain federal laws that are either silent on certain issues or are very ambiguous in interpretation when it comes to certain matters should be deferred to the interpretations while the courts would then rely on interpretations of certain administrative agencies. Well, the new ruling now overturns that previous decision and the Supreme Court majority concluded that on its own interpretation of the law and doesn't, re and doesn't rely on these administrative agencies. And so what I wanted to kind of start off by doing is just really go over what are these administrative agencies because we kind of hear administrative agencies but we don't i don't think a lot of people really are contemplating or mindful of what these agencies are so let's just talk about a few of them administrative agencies include the united states department of justice the united states department of health and human services which we're going to talk a little bit more about the united states department of defense the united states department of veterans affairs so we're going to talk about that some more united states department energy really really important especially since we there's lots of conversation about climate change and green energy the united states department of labor very important we should also be mindful that it includes the united states office of personnel management it includes nasa it includes the national archives and records administration why is that important because we're having lots of talk about what should be included in schools and what should be included in our history books. So that agency is very, of very importance. The, the Library of Congress, you guys, the United States Department of Commerce, when it comes to businesses and decisions about entrepreneurship and corporations in the United States. We should also be mindful that includes the Federal Election Commission, especially when there are issues and concerns about the fairness and the integrity of our elections. We don't want these agencies to anywhere compromised or even the appearance of being compromised. That includes the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And for those of us in the medical field, we are mindful that one of the most important agencies is the Occupational Safety and Health Review Commission, the regulatory agency that keeps us all safe. 
should all should also be mindful that includes the United States African Development Foundation. The Peace Corps is on their on their federal agencies. The United States Department of Transportation. We should also be mindful that includes the Small Business Administration, where a lot of our grants and funding come from. The Social Security Administration. Our, the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Decisions based on our food and what we're eating. At, health regulations. Nuclear Regulatory Commission is also these under these federal agencies. So when we talk about when we talk about who's making decisions about these federal agencies, it's really important to understand who's going to be interpreting the laws, which then leads to our everyday life, how we live, what we eat, um, what happens with our federal government when it comes to, to foreign relations, what happens with our federal government when it comes to regulation of equity on various levels in the United States, what happens to our, what happens to our Social Security, what happens to our ability, which, what happens to our United States Department of Interior. One of the things that the recent administration did was increase funding to preserve and protect uh, historical sites that are important to Black history, which is essentially American history. Let's not get that twisted. But understanding that these things are all related. You know, when we talk about our environmental concerns, global warming, you know, how, what we're exposed to, and when we talk about environmental justice, which I'm going to touch on, you know, the United States Environmental Protection Agency is a very important agency because, again, these agencies are making decisions on our everyday life, okay? And one of the most important agencies that I mentioned when it comes to our health is the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And under this department are several sub-departments, but most notably, we're going to mention a few of them. Under the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, you will find important agencies like the CDC. Okay? <laughs> After going through a pandemic, I think if you weren't aware of the importance of the role of the CDC before the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, you're definitely aware of it now. It also includes under the HHS is also our Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, our Food and Drug Administration, decisions about what drugs are released to the market, what devices, what regulations they go through. And one of also important notice is our Health Resources and Services Administration as someone who works in community health. This is where our funding comes from for our communities. You know, and it's really important that the integrity of these decisions are upheld. And then you have under the HHS is also our National Institute of Health, all of our big research studies, essentially the research that led to the vaccine, for example, research that's leading to some of our most innovative treatments for cancer, our most innovative studies when it comes to autoimmune disease, diseases and conditions, Alzheimer's disease, name it. This agency is highly responsible for a lot of our research and our understanding of research. Um, so it's really important, again, that it states that this particular agency is an agency of integrity, right? And then we have the Office of Civil Rights. So a lot of people aren't uh, aware that the Office of Civil Rights falls under the HHS. So the Office of Civil Rights ensures that individuals receiving services from the HHS conducted and funded programs are subject to unlawful discrimination, that individuals and entities can exercise their conscious rights and religious freedom, and that individuals can access and trust the privacy and security of their health information. Very important. Hi HIPAA laws, your privacy laws. Making sure that your health information is secured and protected. You know, under the HHS is also your Office of Inspector General. Okay, this office protects the integrity of HHS programs. So it's kind of the regulator of the regulator. Okay, it also, um, the HHS also um, helps to control or regulate the Office of Counsel of general counsel, the Office of Intergovernmental and External Affairs. So there's a lot 
to be concerned about. Um, also, I want to also add that the HHS, under the HHS, is also the Office of National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, which, of course, and our now com almost complete reliance on electronic systems for our medical records, for our communication with pharmacies and insurance companies and other healthcare entities, the regulation of, of how that information is protected and used is very important. And with our drug crisis, especially with our opioid crisis, another sub-agency of a great importance is our Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, known as SAMHSA. SAMHSA is responsible for improving access and reducing barriers to high quality effective program and services for individuals who suffer from substance abuse, from addictive um, from addictive behaviors or chemically addictive behaviors and from mental health dis disorders and supporting their families and communities that are disproportionately affected by these conditions as well. So if I haven't gotten your attention yet, <laughs> Now let's dive a little bit deeper as to, how, well, how does this potential decision affect your healthcare? Well, one of the other decisions that kind of plays into this, uh, which I do want to go over, is the Snyder versus United States decision. So that was another recent ruling. And the reason why this ruling is important, I'm going to explain how these two rulings um, potentially interplay with each other. So we have the Snyder versus United States, recent Snyder versus United States ruling, and I'm going to quote the conservative justice Brett Kavanaugh's um, writing on this decision where he stated that the federal law does not make it a crime for state or local officials to accept gifts or gratuities to reward their actions. Instead, he stated that it's up to the state and local governments to regulate these gratuities to state and local officials. So why is that important? Because you don't want your local officials or your state officials to be potentially influenced by the receiving of certain gifts. Um, and, and this was such an important decision in the past or regulation in the past that even in the healthcare industry, there are regulations as to whether or not we can accept gifts for the obvious reasons. You don't want your healthcare provider compromised in terms of um, accepting gifts that may potentially lead to unhealthy relationship with a pharmaceutical company. And so your clinician is more likely to write a certain prescription because they are receiving gratuities or gifts that can sometimes be extravagant. Um, I remember when I started in health that clinicians, it was not unusual for clinicians to have very elaborate vacations or family trips that were paid for or very expensive gifts. Um, I have not experienced that for two reasons. Regulation started when I became uh, actively in actively practicing in medicine, but also I just work in facilities where that's just not as common. So working in the community medicine, we don't get those lavish gifts or, or opportunities to receive gifts like that. And I think it's a good thing. And that's my Dr. T opinion. And you can quote me on that. It's a good thing not to have your officials be compromised. It's a good thing to not have people who have your life in their hands in terms of caring for you to be compromised by the receiving of gifts. So let's let's put these two rulings together. So the, I will say that the courts did make some caveats to this decision, which again leads the lower courts or the courts, the judicial system to make these decisions. And basically it says that the, the court emphasized that the APA, which is the Administrative Procedure Act, does not mandate that judicial review of agency policy making and fact finding be differential, right? It also specifies that the courts may give substantial weight to the agency's subject matter expertise. What was also being emphasized as a result of this overruling of the Chevron deference decision was... So they essentially said this was not an opportunity to revisit old rulings or prior cases. Don't want this over this complete influx of lawsuits as a result of this ruling. But don't get it twisted. 
there is likely going to be some lawsuits. Let's take an example. We're going to go to the United States um, Environmental Protection Agency. And as you know, this particular agency kind of regulates our exposure to toxins, make sure that we breathe clean air, drink clean water, and that we're not exposed to um, soil that's contaminated, which then leads to food that is contaminated. So it's really, and that's just some of the, the role of the Environmental Protection Agency. So the EPA, um, ideally you want that agency to be, to be uh, functioning independently, where it's able to regulate without the influence, without other types of unhealthy influences. So one of the, so for example, who brings these lawsuits against these agencies? Typically, it's corporations, and we know this. This is not a secret, right? Just like it's not a secret that we know of and has been proven that local and state officials take gifts, which can be viewed by some as bribes. So when it comes to the EPA, one of the most, um, I would say one of the most historic cases is the Flint, Michigan water crisis. And that water crisis, which started 10 years ago, you guys, in 2014 to 2016, Flint, Michigan underwent a serious water crisis with elevated lead levels that has been suspected to be the cause of de deaths of many. Um, and it's only until this year, 2024, that the mayor has made the statement is that is concluding. That's a long time, you guys. Um, it took that long for them to switch out the piping to do all the infrastructure changes that are necessary to make sure that Flint, Michigan, which is predominantly a black impoverished city, um, has healthy water. And this is something that is um, primarily a state and local government issue. So pay attention to your local elections. But keep in mind that these cases end up going to the federal, to the federal courts. And the regulations and interpretation of the law comes from these regulatory agencies like the EPA. It was recently that a federal judge this year held Flint in contempt of court for missing deadlines related to replacing service lines. So this is why these agencies are important. It's also important that, um, you know, certain coal industries or um, not to call out certain industries, but I have to because they have historically been the, the culprits when it comes to um, environmental issues. Um, so, for example, if a corporation wants the changing or feels that a particular law or regulation is unjust, they are more likely to bring a lawsuit. And then it's now up to judges, which we hope are not receiving bribes, corporations, which historically have been issues, um, not specifically with, with the judicial system, but of recent with the judicial system. Um, this is not a new or um, earth shattering revelation. This has been an ongoing issue. So if you and corporations can give humongous bribes, you know, their CEOs sometimes are multi millionaires now heading towards billionaires, some of them. So they can afford very lavish gifts, right? They can afford to pay your kid tuition, to buy you a house you wanted to, to have. So they have a lot of financial influence, is what I'm saying. And you want to make sure that their financial influence doesn't lead to you and I breathing toxic airs because a corporation doesn't want to follow certain regulations and just want to dump their garbage and their toxins in our soil or dump their toxins into our air that we breathe. Or in the cases of the hog farms, especially in the South, spray animal feces into the air of neighbors. You know, this is what these agencies do. So it's in terms of regulating to make sure that we are safe. When we as the public rely on them to make these decisions to protect us. Um, so that's that's one thing we, we definitely want to 
be in consideration of. Now, now we talk about the other one of the other important agencies is the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, right? So this is the organization or the agency, the federal agency that's responsible for regulating our medications, for regulating what medications are approved and are then released on the market with ph which pharmaceutical companies are able to um, produce certain medical devices. Now, there are certain concerns when things get fast-tracked, and there is a fast-track in the FDA where they sometimes look at previous um, devices, for example, and say, hey, this device is very similar to that one. We can fast-track it for approval, and then it's used for surgery or for some type of office-based procedure or a medication gets fast-tracked. And don't forget the regulation of laboratory-grown food. It's important that we are able to trust this agency to make the right decisions. And, you know, the agency has been making certain decisions to make sure that corporations and especially pharmaceutical companies are regulated and are not putting us at risk. So, for example, the United States um, Food and Drug Agency announced in April of this year um, a final rule when it comes to laboratory developed tests. So, laboratory developed tests are in vitro diagnostic products that are intended for clinical use and designed and manufactured and used within single clinical laboratory that meets certain regulatory requirements. And so before, this is not as much of an issue, right? Because the risk of certain laboratory, the risk of certain laboratory developed tests were not as much as they are now. The more current and more modern LTDs are considered to be of greater risk. And so the FDA is basically saying that these LTDs should be regulated just like medical devices are regulated. Why? Because we rely on these laboratory tests, these innovative tests to then interpret whether or not a condition is present, whether or not it's controlled, which then leads to the management, whether we give more medication or initiate a certain therapy, right? Especially if you're dealing with things like cancer or autoimmune conditions, which are on these very, um, very risky medications, you want to make sure that the laboratory that you're interpreting, the laboratory test that you're interpreting is viable. And so what the FDA is saying is that we're going to put these um, LTDs, these laboratory developed tests, under the same rigorous process as we do medical devices, which means that they have a pre-market review, that they have quality system requirements, that they have adverse event reporting, that there's some type of establishment registration and device list thing. So labeling requirements, investigative use requirements. So it allows us to have to basically improve our safety when it comes to use, using these particular um, LTDs, laboratory developed tests. So just to remind ourselves, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services is responsible for drug negotiations, for example. So a lot of our minoritized populations are oftentimes majority enrolled in programs like Medicaid, for example, and our senior population or our dis disabled population or more or otherwise able population are oftentimes enrolled in Medicare. Um, so it's really important that these these uh, this particular agency again is making the right decision that's not influenced by outside influences when it comes to our health. So this particular ruling does put at risk our recent inflation, our recent IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, which was the act that then leads to negotiation with the pricing of certain medications like insulin, which treats diabetes, which, which disproportionately affect minoritized groups. Um, so if there, if there are drug companies now who are willing to contest that decision, they can form a lawsuit. And you have to now rely on the courts to independently make these decisions as to whether or not these prices need to be controlled. It is almost a no-brainer that, yes, we need control of these medications that have been partially of the part of the reasons why people are bankrupt. You know, medication and medical treatment is one of the primary reasons why people go bankrupt in the United States, especially if you're in an impoverished community. If you have a crime, it's unfair. It's I can't say how much it is unfair to live in communities 
that are, for example, food deserts or communities that are exposed to environmental toxins, then have to deal with the development of certain medical conditions. And now the drug companies are, are overcharging you um, at such extravagant, at such extravagant pricing that now you can't afford the medication to treat the conditions that was caused by your your uh that was caused by the fairies in your life it just seems so unjust that i cannot explain how concerned these decisions are you know and how important it is for us to be mindful of how these decisions then lead to our everyday life and also keep in mind that cms is the agency that made the decision to extend the postpartum coverage the postpartum coverage for moms in a postpartum period to up to 12 months and that has been accepted in up to four i think the last count is 43 states so the majority of states have decided in some way to extend the coverage for postpartum health care the other thing that the cms does is determine what medications what procedures what visits get covered you know and another thing that we take for granted also is under the affordable care act is the provision of preventive services right so if there is any contesting of these preventive services being covered then even preventive services like making sure you're not diabetic like making sure your cholesterol is controlled, like making sure that you receive cancer treat cancer screenings on time based on your risk level, making sure that you have access to um, to getting immunizations if you so desire to get to be immunized so that you're protected, especially when we have conditions and issues like a pandemic. So it's so important that we are informed and aware of how these agencies work. I want to tap on one more agency before we kind of wrap up is the CDC. Um, the CDC got a lot of heat and granted it was a very emotional time. It was a very scary time for many, especially those who watched the loss of life of their loved ones. So the CDC is the agency that was in that was responsible, or one of the agencies responsible for protecting our data um, and for coming up with regulations and recommendations. CDC does this all the time when it comes for influence in our daily seasonal um, seasonal outbreaks. The pandemic was horrible, right? And not only that, but what made it so difficult was the fact that this was a new virus, a relatively new variation of an old virus. Let me correct myself. And so being, the CDC had to learn very quickly the virulence of the virus and ways to counter it. And they look at behavioral ways, not just medicines um, and vaccines, but they look at behavioral activities. And one of the most controversies was the recommendation for mask wearing or the closing of businesses or the isolation of individuals to stay in their homes or be six feet away from others. And there were people who disagreed with some of these recommendations. Um, but our understanding is this agency does the best that it can do with the information that's available with a high mortality rate to make decisions that they believe will protect us. They have received a lot of criticism, in some cases hate, as a result of their decisions, but it's important that they are not swayed by external forces, by potentially gifts and um, gratuities, quote unquote. You want them to make decisions based on the raw data that's available. You want them to make decisions based on the information that's interpreted by scientists, the individuals who have the ability to interpret those particular data. And so it's very important that these agencies are able to run independently. You get what I'm saying? And I do want to mention our veterans also because I you know, this is Dr. T speaking. This does not necessarily represent the platform as a whole, but 
I do want to say, veterans, I believe in the United States, we can do much better, especially when it comes to their mental health. So veteran services, housing, um, medical treatments is another agency that is supposed to be pretty much independently run or regulated that should have the ability to interpret its own data and to then make changes based on that. Now, again, the courts will be making all judicial decisions, and the hope is that they will honor the expertise of the agencies. You know, I had some hesitation about talking about this topic just simply because when you add politics of any kind, People are very passionate about their beliefs when it comes to politics and and sometimes don't really listen to the actual facts and raw data. And, and I tried many times not to not to talk about this, but I feel compelled um, to talk about this topic. I feel like it's a topic that that needs to at least be brought to your attention because of how important it is. You know, our everyday lives are regulated by these agencies whether you agree with their decisions or not our belief and trust is that they are making decisions that are the best for us right making decisions based on data collection and monitoring and surveillance um and before they were able to be the agencies that would decide on ambiguous laws or laws that just don't even exist because life is evolving and things and we encounter new situations as life evolves. Now with the concern about the partisanship of the court system, you can see why, even if you don't agree, you can see why there is some concern about this recent Chevron leak decision and Add to that the recent Snyder versus United States decision that made the decision on gifts and gratuities. You can see why people are concerned. And so my goal today is I'm. It is not my position to tell you who to who to vote for, who not to vote for. Um, my goal today is to bring you the raw information and to kind of work through the nuances of these rulings and how it impacts healthcare, with the goal of you. Um, being more informed so you can make the best decision, not just for your health, but also for the health of those of fellow Americans. And the reason why that's important is as you learn in the pandemic, there is no, we do not live on an island and even on an island, you're not by yourself. Um, and so our health is very much impacted by the health of others around us. Um, so it's very important that we make decisions, not just because our health is not isolated. So it's impossible to make a decision based on your individual health without considering the health of others around you. And my hope is that with this information, we're able to pay attention to these rulings and not say, oh, it's some kind of fishing industry ruling. It has nothing to do with me. Yes, it does. It's important that we keep an ear to the ground and we pay t and we pay attention to the nuances of these decisions. And I'm not saying that these things are going to happen. It is just raising awareness of why people are concerned that there's a potential, a very strong potential for these things to happen and for these new lawsuits to occur, which can potentially change previous rulings and regulations. That being said, I am Dr. T, the hand behind the handle of Healthy Bump Club right here on YouTube and the hand behind the handle of Healthy Bump dot club on Instagram. I thank you for watching. We will be back to our routine episodes. We have some amazing topics coming up for you. Um, I am just coming back from Africa also. I can't wait to share with you my experience, which was phenomenal, um, so that uh, you have some insight on healthcare in other countries, um, specifically in countries that are developing countries. And if another ruling comes up or another change comes up that affects your health, we'll be right here to make sure that you are informed and, and work through the understanding of these rulings with you. We, I look forward to seeing you guys where on the next episode. <laughs>